Hello everyone, welcome to Math 143 Quantitative Literacy. My name is Craig Carrigy and I'll be your instructor for this course. This is the first lesson of Unit 1. We're going to start by talking about percents, fractions, and decimals, and how we work with each one of these things, and hopefully see some real-life examples as we go through. So the objectives for this section include performing conversions and calculations involving percents, finding the percent increase or decrease, being able to solve some problems using percents, and then being able to evaluate the legitimacy of some claims based on what we know about percent. So the word percent just directly translates to per hundred. So whenever you see something written as a percent, we can rewrite that as a fraction by just writing it as that number over 100. So 1% 1 would be 1 over 100, 5% would be 5 over 100, and 79% would be 79 over 100. In whatever case, the percent is just that many out of 100. We often see percents when we see information from research results. So the International Mass Retail Association reported that 20% of adults plan to buy Valentine's Day cards next year. Well, that would mean 20 out of every 100 adults would plan to buy a Valentine's Day card. So in order to work with percents, we have to convert them to either a fraction or a decimal. So first we're just going to convert them to fractions and then we'll work with the rest. So if we have 9%, then 9% is just equal to 9 out of 100. Same is true for 84%, it's just 84 out of 100. And then 29%, 29 over 100. And so when we want to write a percent, as a fraction, we can just rewrite it as that number divided by 100. When we convert those fractions, we sometimes have to simplify them. And so to simplify these fractions, 42% is the same thing as 42 over 100. Both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 2, so we can divide the top by 2, divide the bottom by 2. 42 divided by 2 is 21. 100 divided by 2 is 50. There are no more common factors, so we can't simplify this anymore. No other numbers will divide into it evenly. Same thing for 75%. That's 75 over 100. Here, both are divisible by 5. 75 divided by 5 will give you 15. Out of 20. We could then simplify this by 5 again. Fifteen divided by five is three. Twenty divided by five is four. And in the same way at the beginning, we could have divided both of them by twenty-five. So now we can write percents as fractions. If we actually divide the numbers, we can then rewrite that fraction as a decimal. First, we can rewrite 12% as a fraction, 12 over 100. And now to write as a decimal, we're just going to divide 12 divided by 100, and you can use your calculator for this. And you'll find you get 0 0.12. So one thing to notice here is that when we convert it from this percent to a decimal, we've essentially just moved the decimal place two places to the left and we drop the percent sign. And so we can use this throughout to convert directly from percents to decimal. So to convert from a percent to a fraction, we're just going to drop the percent sign, divide by 100. To convert from a fraction to a decimal, we just divide the numerator and denominator. To convert directly from a percent to a decimal, just drop the percent and move the decimal place two places to the left, or the decimal point two places to the left. To convert from a decimal to a percent, Move the decimal two places to the right, and then add the percent sign. So using these rules, you should be able to determine percents, fractions, and decimals, given whichever one you start with. If we want to convert the following percents to decimals, well, again, we can just take the decimal point, move it two places to the left, and drop the percent sign, and we get 0 0.47. Same is true here. If we move it two places to the left, now we just have to put a 0 here as a placeholder. We get 0 0.067 for 
Same thing, move the decimal place two places, drop the percent sign, and we get 1.20. To write decimals as percents, we just go the opposite way. We're going to move the decimal place two places to the right, and then add the percent sign, so this becomes 34%. Again, two places to the right, and then add the percent sign, so this is 7%. And then again, two places to the right, and add the percent sign, and we get 165.8%. So let's just check that we can convert these different values. To convert 47.3% to a decimal, that's 47.3%. To make it a decimal, we're just going to move the decimal point two places to the left and drop the percent sign. So we get 0 0.473. If we want to change 0 0.24 to a percent. Well, we're just going to move to the right and add the percent sign. Then we get 24%. And to convert 80% to a fraction in lowest terms, that is then going to be 80 divided by 100. We can divide the top and bottom by 20. 80 divided by 20 is 4. 100 divided by 20 is 5. So now that we know what percents are and how they work and how to convert between decimals and percents, well, how can we use them? Often you're going to use percentages to find the percent of some total value. Some amount of people, some amount of money, but of some total value. So if we want to answer the question, what is a percent of B, right, what is some percent of some total, then we can convert the percentage to a decimal and multiply times the total. So if we want to know what 50% of 10 is, well that's 0 0.5, 50% written as a decimal, times 10, which equals 5. 25% of 80, well that's 0.25, 25% written as a decimal, times 80, which will give you 20. So when we're writing these statements in words, recognize that the word of implies multiplication, and the word is implies an equal sign. And always remember to convert to a decimal or a fraction. So a restaurant was running a fundraiser for a local food bank in which 30% of every purchase was donated for food relief. If my wife and I spent $24.59 at the restaurant, how much was donated? Well, to determine that, we want to know what is 30% of 24.59. How much money was donated to charity? Well, 30% as a decimal, that's 0 0.30 times 24.59. And when you multiply the two, Finally, we get $7.38. So $7.38 was donated. $7.38 is 30% of $24.59. Very often when you go to the store, especially after the holidays, you'll find sales, and sales are marked as 70% off, 75% off, 90% off, 50% off. So a closeout store is advertising leather jackets at 70% off the original price which means the sale price is 30% of the original price. If one jacket has a sale price of $59, well, how much did it cost originally? Well, this $59, this is 30% of the original price. So to do this, we just want to use a little bit of division, and we can rewrite this as an equation. Remember, is is equal, so $59 equals 30% times whatever number we're looking for. 30% as a decimal.
0 0.30. And so if we divide by 0 0.3, we can find our total, $59. divided by 0 0.30, and we find that the jacket had an original price of $196.67. So that $59 is 70% off of $196.67. We can also use percents when we refer to parts of a whole or parts of some total, even if that total is not equal to 100. For example, there are 32 teams in the NFL. 12 of them make the playoffs each year. I think it's 14 this year, actually. So what percentage of the teams make the playoffs? To find that, we're just going to use the fraction to determine the decimal, which will tell us the percent. So 12 of the teams out of the total 32. If we divide this in the calculator, 12 divided by 32, you get 0 0.375. Converted to a percentage, moving the decimal place two places to the right, and then add the percent sign. 37.5% of the teams make the playoffs. If I'm right, and this year it's 14, we find that that's equal to 0.4375. 43.75%. So nearly half of the teams will make the playoffs. So let's see if we can calculate some of these particular values. We want to know 38% of 400. Well, that's 0 0.38 times. 400. Number of implies multiply. We find this is equal to 152. Here we have 17.49 is 20% of what amount? Here again we're going to want to divide. If we divide by 0 0.2, 17.49, is 20% of $87.45. What percentage of 42 is 15? So now we're looking for the percent. To find that, we're going to start with the fraction, 15 out of 42. When we divide, 15 divided by 42, three, five, seven, one. or 35.71 percent. Percents that are more than 100 percent imply a value that's greater than the total that you started with. In some cases you can have values that are greater than 100 percent. When you talk about increases of COVID cases for example, if you double, triple the amount of people who get sick, 200, 300 percent. However, sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense and this is why we, we always talk about giving 110%. So suppose that a normal half hour of practice for a tennis player, you expend 280 calories of energy. Well, how many calories would she need to expend if she were to give 110%? So the question is, what is 110% of 280? Again, in the same way, we convert this to a decimal, 1.10 times 280. 
Let me find the answer is 308. So she would have to expend 308 calories of energy. There are other ways that a percentage is over 100 can make some sense and can be useful. Sales tax, for example. Sales tax in North Carolina, I looked this up, is 4.75%. When you buy an item, you don't pay 100% of the price. You add that sales tax on the top, so you pay 104.75% of the price. So what is the total amount spent on an item that's purchased for $199.99? How much would you actually pay if you purchased it in your state? Well, what is 104.75% of $199.99? The process is still the same. We're just going to convert this percent to a decimal, 1.0475 times 199.99. And the actual price that you would pay when you multiply $209.49. So let's say a real estate developer is looking for investors to help fund a new condo. He promises to pay back 145% of the original investment in four years. If you're going to invest $30,000, how much money will you get back? Well, what is 145% of $30,000? 145% as a decimal is 1.45 times 30,000. And the amount of money that you would get back $43,500. So another thing that you can do with percent is compare deals. right? So in a recent mall adding, a woman found a dress with a selling price of $79. She has two coupons to choose from. One's $15 off of a $50 purchase. The other offers 20% off any item. So what is the better choice? There's lots of different ways to think about this and lots of different ways to figure out the answer. But there's only one right answer. Which one's cheaper? A $15 off of $50 or more. Well, $15 off of $79. That's going to be 79 minus 15. So that's equal to $64. 20% off of any item would mean that you would pay 80% of the original price. So what is 80%? of $79. Well, to determine that, convert 80% to a decimal times 79 and the cost is $63.20. Not a big difference in general. Obviously the 20% coupon is better, but because of the nature of this coupon, recognize that as the price of the item went up, if this was more expensive than $79, then you are going to save more than $15. You've already saved more than $15. You saved $15.80 using the 20% off. However, for a price less than $79, something like $75 or $70, the $15 off might be better. So it's just some things to consider. So a refrigerator has a regular price of $1,149 at Home Depot and $1,219 at Lowe's. Home Depot is offering 15% off. And Lowe's offers $200 off. So which is the better option? Well, at Home Depot, we want to know what is, because it's 15% off, right? We're going to be paying 85% of the original price. So what is 85% of $1,149? And we know at Lowe's, it's $200 off. And so we're going to be paying $1,019. Convert 85% to a decimal and then multiply. We find the cost of the refrigerator. $976.65. So Home Depot, in this case, is definitely the better offer. And now it's a lot more than 80 cents.
Finally, in this section, we can talk about the percentage increase and decrease of a particular value. So how much did, what percent did it go up, what percent did it go down? And in my reference to COVID cases before, this is where um, that would then be calculated. And so to determine a percent increase or a percent decrease, we always use the new amount minus the original amount, and then divide by whatever our original amount was. How much did it go up from that original amount, or how much did it go down from the original amount? In each case, you're going to get a decimal, which you can then convert to a percent. So let's try this. A large latte at Shakey's Caffeine Shack sells for $3.50, but now it's being offered for $3. Is this better than the 20% off at the coffee shop across the street? What's the percent decrease? How much of a sale did we get? To get the percent decrease, We have the new amount minus the original divided by the original amount. The new amount is $3. The original amount is $3.50. When we divide that by So it's decreased then 0.1428 or 14.28%. So it's not better than the 20% off at the other coffee shop. This is only 14.28% off. On July 24, 2009, the minimum wage was increased from 6.55 to 7.25. If we want to determine the percent increase, well, the percent increase is equal to the new amount minus the original amount divided by the original amount. So 725 minus 655 divided by 655, the original amount. We find we get 0 0.1069 or 10.69 percent when we convert that decimal to a percentage. So the minimum wage was increased by 10 percent.